All right, we are live. So welcome back to DAP University. So today we've got a lot to talk about in our stream, okay? We're going to talk about an industry that is rapidly uh, being overtaken by crypto and seeing adoption in ways that I think a lot of people have not expected, okay? And why this is such a huge deal for mass adoption of blockchain technology, cryptocurrencies, all that. Okay, we'll look a lot of the news updates that happened in this space since yesterday. Um, uh, we've got some pretty exciting news about uh, adoption of, of blockchain technology from like a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum. Might not even know what that is and why that's important. We're going to explain that in this video because it's definitely a critical piece in the puzzle for this technology to realize its full potential. Okay. We're going to answer some of your questions, uh, check out the crypto markets, and a lot more. So if you're on here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step-by-step -step start to finish, uh, then head on over to dappiversity.com forward slash bootcamp to start today. All right, so we got people jumping in the chat here. We've got... Uh, uh, let's see here. Automatic Beats. Uh, Kramer, I hope I'm saying that right. Michael... Uh, uh, Ivar, uh, Crypto Lee, uh, uh, Machiavelli, hope I'm saying that right. Uh, we got Walshi, Robert, uh, Susanna, uh, Quinn, welcome, welcome. All right, so let's jump into this. Um, we're going to talk about an industry that is rapidly uh, being overtaken by crypto and why this is a good thing, okay, and what the potential is for this long term. So if you're just tuning in the live streams uh, for the first time in a while, um, you know, I, I have brought on my co-host Walshi to the channel today. He's been helping us prep for the streams, uh, been helping us do some great research on the space. Uh, if you have something that you want to see covered on this channel, you can follow Walshi on Twitter at I am Walshi NFG. You can see his handle there. Um, and you can definitely reach out to him, tag him, DM him, all that type of stuff. Uh, cause he's, you know, been doing a lot of legwork, adding a lot of value to these streams. So welcome to the channel, Walshi. Yeah. Hey, GM, everybody. Morning, Gregory. Happy to be awesome. here. Ready to rock and roll. Yeah. So let, let's get into this. Um, let's talk about this major industry that is rapidly being overtaken by crypto. So um, really, this is all, this is the entire uh, professional sports industry as we know it. We're seeing this across multiple different uh, sports here. So I'm trying to share my screen. Um, this live stream software is new to me as we have started doing this. So we got lots of stuff. We're talking about you know, Bitcoin being given away at the Super Bowl. We're talking about um, you know, American football teams being sponsored by crypto uh, exchanges, cryptocurrencies, uh, uh, international football, or as we know it, soccer in America, right? Teams the same way. So let's let's start off with this one, uh, Walsh. What are we doing with this big crypto giveaway uh, at the Super Bowl? Yeah, that's right. It's uh, credit goes to Above Realty for this one. Um, so FTX is giving away Bitcoin guys during the Super Bowl. They're just giving it away. Just, just it's free. Just take, take it. Uh, it's pretty cool too because they're uh, the way they're doing it, it's really unique. Haven't really seen anything like this before. Essentially, whatever time their ad runs is what they'll give away. They'll basically do a one to one. So for an example, if it runs at like 7:45 uh, p.m. or you know, if, if even if it's a.m., which it won't be, right? It doesn't matter. Um, they'll give away 7.45 BTC. Right. So at any time, whenever you see that ad, that's like at that time, um, I'm assuming uh, whatever like time that zone they're in. So I'm assuming Pacific time, but don't quote me on that one. Um, they'll just give it away. Guys, free BTC, just like that. Just watch and pay attention. I think they have a, uh, a section on their website. Uh, so if you go to FTX is the actual main website, they have like a drop page or landing page rather um, where you can find more details about how to get involved. It involves having an account and all that other fun stuff. Yeah, who but gets yeah, it? I mean, is it is it just like people. one recipient or is it like uh, multiple? Like who who gets it? They, they said four people in the post that I was reading. They'll give mm -hmm. away to four separate people. What that says to me is they probably have four commercials spanning the entire Super Bowl. Uh, but that's just a guess. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that one. So <laughs> the there's Super Bowl guys, free yeah. PC. I mean, and also guys, don't forget the Super Bowl is one of the most like watched, like most one of what like, it was. I think it's like it's like the largest televised event like by a large margin like across I, I don't know what the metrics are there's a lot definitely the, people definitely the most expensive yeah like to buy ad ad time and stuff is just ludicrous yeah but i think that's an indication of the viewership right and like how <laughs> like what the what the intention of the viewer is during that time so anyways it's it's a huge deal yeah um so there's more 
that I want to talk about in terms of sports adoption. It's not just the Super Bowl giveaway. But let's talk about the implications of adoption uh, of crypto in the sports world. We got sponsorships like we're talking about here a second ago. A lot of attention. Like this is not new. Like we've we've, but it's starting to really accelerate. You know, we saw like FTX buy or uh, rename. Uh, I can't remember what the arena was. Um, we've seen other you know exchanges do similar types of things. But starting to snowball and talk about the sports world uh, and the fan base and why it's such a big deal. Number one, it's incredibly mainstream. All right. And so, you know, just taking that mainstream awareness of crypto up to the next level. The other thing is the type of uh, culture that already surrounds sports is very similar to crypto anyway. Uh, you have people that, you know, are are in it to win it, so to speak. You know what I mean? They've already uh, kind of formed tribes and communities that they are, um, y- y- you know, passionate about. And that's basically what crypto is right now. Uh, so it's a natural fit, right? It's it's the perfect market. It's a massive market, and it's it's really mainstream. Um, so what are the other uh, developments here? We've got this massive giveaway at Super Bowl. Um, what else, Walshy? We've got some sponsorships. Yeah, there's the, like. so many. Yeah, like um, so. For example, uh, I'm from Washington D.C., and the Washington Nationals signed a deal um, with Terra. Um, so the Terra blockchain, everybody, uh, I was right. reading into that, uh, you know, my parents have like season tickets and stuff and they're really anti crypto for some reason, just cause you know, they're boomers or whatnot. Um, so this one was like just a, just a nice little, uh, you know, swish for them. Um, right. when, when I heard about this story. So you're going to be able to use, um, like UST for purchases inside the actual stadium. Um, of course they have, uh, like their own like season holders, season ticket holders, like club, and it's going to get renamed to the Terra club. Um, there's also um, like a five part digital series that is going to get released as well um, about Terra from the Washington Nationals. So that's pretty wild, right? It's, it hits close to home. Again, I'm from DC, so that's pretty sweet. But that's not it. That's not it at all. There's just still so much more. Um, like in, I think it was like October, sometime like late 2021, um, Binance partnered with Lazio, um, which is a you know a, a soccer team, a football you know football team, mm-hmm. um, but Manchester United now confirmed partnership with Tezos. And so this right. one's fresh as well. Um, so Tezos, Manchester United, now one. Uh, they have, they're have they going to have branding that's going to appear on the warm-up uniforms. There's like a potential NFT, of course, right? And then future fan experiences that go along with it. But not, all, not only that, there's still more. Um, even Flow, the blockchain, released a game in a partnership with the Olympics, right? right. And so yeah, the Olympics released- is massive massive and yeah, yeah guys olympics is going on right now in case you didn't know that um right it's called uh the olympic games jam beijing 2022 so it's got a pretty cool name i guess <laughs> um anyway play is developing it and what's interesting about this is actually you um you don't need to connect a wallet to participate in the game to play the game you don't need a wallet and that's new with a lot of these that are like apps and stuff that are coming out that are catered around web three you do right you do actually need a wallet but this one's obviously trying to find that sweet middle ground for like you know people who haven't adopted crypto yet to like you know play the game and you know utilize it and so you know you don't need a wallet but yeah obviously you can connect the wallet as well yeah totally yeah yeah this this is this is big so um yeah, sports sports world is huge. I think we've talked, you know, kind of driven home exactly why this is such a big deal. Here's all the examples of this. Um, I want to talk about another thing in terms of just like uh, crypto adoption that is um, big, especially from a tech technical standpoint. Okay, uh, there's a lot of people watching this channel. Um, you know, are are highly technically inclined as in the days we try to teach you on this channel is how to you know break into this industry uh learn these technical skills because that's where the real opportunity is um and part of you know that journey is just understand the space from a technical angle and why technical advances are, are huge um so one that i want to talk about right now is this and the implications of it so we saw this come out yesterday um so basically argent wallet all right um, it's talking about how you can now send from major exchanges to Argent via ZK Sync. All right, now it's t- twenty to t- ten to twenty x cheaper than bridging from L1. Send from Coinbase, FTX, Binance, and more. All right, there. This looks like a partnership with Layer Swap. So um, I want to talk about this because this is a step in the right direction uh, for how I envision uh, the blockchain space uh, really realizing its full potential. So. 
um, if, if, if you're brand new or maybe you just need reinforcement on this idea, um, you know, in my opinion, one of the, one of the promises for the future is fast, scalable, cheap blockchains. And we see that all over the place, right? Uh, now we see alternative layers ones besides Ethereum popping up and gaining traction. Some of them, uh, you know, better than others. Some of them having problems in ways that ETH doesn't or et cetera, et cetera, right? Vice versa. Um, but in my opinion, the 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 real direction here is to to use a base chain like Ethereum and then have a separate environment on top of that where you have multiple environments that you can choose from that are called layer twos that make their faster and cheaper that don't compromise the security underneath. Okay. So uh you know, layer twos are huge for the future. And one of the problems with layer twos is getting on and off of them. Like right now, you typically have to like have funds on a layer one like Ethereum and then bridge over to it. All right. Um, and as we saw last week during one of our <laughs> videos, uh, we saw a, a, a bridge hack or exploit, whatever you want to call it, um, where people lost a lot of money. All right. There's a lot of people don't trust bridges for good reasons. I don't often trust bridges. I'm not saying they're all bad, but they have, you know, you know, big risks associated with them. So the solution to that is basically, uh, in my opinion, having on ramps and off ramps directly to layer two environments, like basically just being able to get in the crypto ecosystem straight to the place you want to go rather than having to go through all these hoops with all these failure points on them. Okay. So that's what this is. Basically you can get, you can go onto a, a cryptocurrency exchange, like a centralized one, like uh, Coinbase, FTX, Binance, et cetera, et cetera. You can just buy in with dollars or whatever your currency is. Um, and then you can just go straight into the crypto that you want and withdraw it straight to these layer twos, um, you know, assuming that they are token-based assets. And then you're on those environments. And you can do stuff like cheap, fast DeFi, right? You can do stuff like swap the tokens for other stuff. You can get in yield farms, you can flip NFTs. Now, well, those ecosystems are are emerging, right? And they we need they need time for those network effects to like really build up to where you can do all that stuff and have a really rich, vibrant ecosystem. Um, but we're headed there, and this is a step in that direction from building the bridge in both directions. Okay, so I've always said this that we need more, uh, you know, layer two support from cryptocurrency exchanges like Coinbase, FTX, uh, Binance, um, and this is a step in the right direction. Okay, this is not the final the final uh, destination, uh, but it's close. Yeah, that was, that was extremely well said. You're totally right. I mean, just to, just to spell it out and, and, and put the ugly truth out there, you know, like you said, it's extremely expensive if you just move your funds over to ETH layer one and then move them over to layer two. Like that's a step that's pretty much irrelevant at this point. And the way the technology is moving, right it needs to become irrelevant when all is said and done because that congestion is not going to go away anyone who knows what they're talking about knows that um you know gas fees aren't going to go down with, with the merge that's coming up here um and for a reason of course too like it's just not how it works moving to layer twos was always the vision it was always the intention so, um and that's huge again having the ability finally having some kind of service that is skipping that that initial step to be on layer one to layer two that's just the the tip that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? There's so many more that are going to follow right afterwards. They have to, like, there's no other choice, you know, for consumers, for regular uh, users, right? You and me, like we need that because otherwise it's just too expensive to, to, to transact otherwise. Right. So it's, it definitely saves like a lot of time, a lot of money. I uh, really like how they went with ZK sync, of course, because they have that, you know, withdrawal time. That's really quick as well. When you actually do want to pull your funds out, um, makes things just a little bit faster. Um, so big, big plus in, 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 you know, in their corner, you know, props to Argent, um, props to major exchanges. Like this is definitely the right move, especially for just your regular, you know, everyday average Joe like me. Um, yeah, totally. Definitely the right move. Totally, totally. So um, let's see if we got some questions in the chat here. We just want to catch up on these. Um, somebody says half uh, four have to retweet the one commercial tweet 7 million for a 30 second commercial <laughs> that's, that's insane right yeah that's a lot of money uh somebody says when do i think e 2.0 will come so that's a great question so ethereum 2.0 is not a monolithic thing that's all going to arrive at one time 
Okay. So E2.0 is really multiple things. Um, and it's kind of a tricky concept because basically right now, or, or I guess E2.0 in, in one sense, the base blockchain itself is a monolithic thing, but the roadmap for ETH is going to happen in phases. Okay. So basically E2.0, and I guess they're not even calling it E2.0 anymore, but <laughs> it's the idea is like, we're going to, we're going to start off with moving to proof of stake, um, which is that blockchain already exists. It just doesn't have, real activity on it yet it's being it's like you know you're sort of building this rocket ship over here and people can kind of uh you know get onto the rocket ship but it can't take lift off yet so um that's that's called the beacon chain and that's gonna get merged back into the ethereum main chain um my my take is this year still that that's going to happen um the, you know at the beginning of the year we were thinking it was going to be q2 2022 um we'll still see if that happens i have a feeling if it you know, well, we have the difficulty bomb has been delayed. Um, if it is not going to ship in Q2 to 2022, we'll probably find that out pretty soon um, because they they typically make these announcements significantly ahead of time because you've got to move that difficulty bomb back if it's not going to if it's not going to launch in Q2 to 2022. But I still think it's going to be here this year. Um, now that being said, the other parts of Ethereum Layer Two, like uh, um, sharding, for example, is not happening this year by any stretch of the imagination probably won't have it for several more years but that's okay like it's not like we don't have to have ethereum 2.0 fully shipped to get the benefits of a fast cheap blockchain like that's going to happen with layer twos as they take off as you go to proof of stake um that's going to uh silence a lot of the fears around proof of work mining we won't even have it anymore we just sidestep that problem completely um it'd be a much more favorable uh chain than it is now yeah totally agreed our, um, our friends over at Bankless had a really great interview with Vitalik in which they explained the entire roadmap and go into detail about like what you can expect moving forward from like the you know Ethereum rollout. Highly recommend that interview. It was really great. I have a quick question here. I think this is a good one. Um, so Santiago asks uh, what, for a quick explanation on why uh, ETH 2.0 won't have lower fees. Um, because there's nothing about uh, basically there's I mean there's there's nothing about ETH that from the fee structure that's changing. Okay. Um, the only thing that's changing in ETH 2.0 is that essentially, oh, well, I say the only thing, the, in very simple terms, the only thing that's changing is the consensus mechanism, all right, uh, which is going to be proof of stake. And then also um, how we, what like uh, sharding is the next step, which is basically uh, taking a blockchain and making it a blockchain of blockchains. Or it's said another way in terms of like computer science terms, if you're, more technically minded uh like think about like a massive database that gets sharded so you take all the data and you break it up into shards because you don't need to access everything all at one time right or, or you can you can make you can delegate a lot of the responsibilities to a smaller shard that all make up this one big thing that's really what you're doing with uh with uh sorry sharding on, on e2.0 so none of those things make it cheaper to use okay um now sharding um will increase a performance benefit it can make it faster and let's just say for you know argument's sake it's 2x faster then all the scalability benefits you get on top of layer two gets multiplied by two down the base chain so let's say you had your layer two go to 50,000 transactions per second well when sharding turns on it goes to 100,000 transactions per second um because it's it's a force multiplier um so that's why it doesn't get cheaper but it does get faster um but we all, it already gets faster with layer twos like now. Yeah, that was well said. Do you want to take another question? Mm -hmm. So I think Ryan has a really great question here. <clears throat> this goes hand in hand with what we've been reporting on with NFTs as well. Um, so what do you think is a good first step for fixing the perception of NFTs? I think that the current image is very damaging to crypto as a whole. And before you, you weigh in, I, I'll agree with you, Ryan, as well. I think that the image right now is definitely taking a beating. And you know, there's definitely an image we can rectify. I don't know how much honestly matters that really to say the truth. Um, I mean, like crypto's had this image problem for such a long time. <laughs> like it's, it, and it has succeeded despite the image problem. At some point, what's going to have to happen is you build leverage. That's how you, that's how you change opinion in the first place is by building reputation, credibility, and that creates leverage to where, they are the crazy ones, not you anymore. So that's just going to matter of time, in my opinion. 
Yeah, no, that's a perfect answer. Really, time time will change everything. I think more infrastructure utilization will accelerate that as well. Once you start seeing um, it's like great projects like we covered yesterday with like the Lens Protocol, again, yeah. Web3 social media, and that's very NFT heavy. And once you start seeing great successful use cases like that, it'll definitely help out as well. I think you're right, though. Time will... Time- and I'm, I'm not saying that like, um, you know, the image issue is not a problem at all. It's just not a deal breaker. And what can you honestly do about it? And do you really want to spend all your time spinning your wheels trying to like convince somebody to like you? Or do you just want to take action and make something where they're going to have no choice? Right. Like what happens when the entire crypto space, like like every sports team in the world is sponsored by a crypto or like some NFT project when every like sports arena is owned by, you know, some crypto exchange or block, like, like you're just not going to have like, you're, you're going to be the crazy one at that point when you're the doubter. <laughs> it, it's like how, you know, how um you're, you're an old head. Like I am, you remember when the internet came out, you remember how people first started perceiving it, especially when it came to like, um you know, taking uh, like credible news sources off the internet and then using them for whatever in real life, whether it was for like a, school report or whether it was for when you're just talking to someone about you know what's happening the 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 perception back then was like oh you can't trust what's coming from the internet you know always take right. that with a grain of salt and what happened right time exactly. massive ad- adoption and then now yep. uh, you know everything's on the internet and even thinking that you can't take something seriously on the internet is mocked so it's just the time thing yeah or like you know, don't post a picture of yourself on the internet <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah like, yeah right parents that were like <laughs> don't don't meet don't don't try like if somebody like wants to show romantic interest towards you online like don't do that like that's sketchy like that's yeah, the primary <laughs> way people meet like and find people that they end up with long term <laughs> i love that yeah um so yeah i mean I, you want to you want to go to world news or yeah let's, let's go a couple let's go a couple more items here um so let's look at uh um yeah let's look at the russian news so tell us about that while she here this is a, a really big deal um so russia yeah i actually had a report on russia yesterday as well uh but they even moved it forward since yesterday um and so russia uh has proposed and is seeking uh to approve crypto legislation to move in as early as the 18th of february that's eight days from now um which is a complete just a hundred 80 degree turn 180 from uh, two and a half weeks ago where russia's central bank i uh, wanted a full-on crypto ban uh, this is a, a huge deal for a lot of reasons like russia accounts for 11 percent of the global uh, bitcoin like hash rate they have of about 100 billion dollars in investments there's obviously uh, russia russian like youtube channels and russian you know uh, uh protocols and developers etc it's a big ecosystem over there as well um and right now you see the russian government kind of going back and forth of like do we want to ban it you know and apparently not right so it's pretty right. it's pretty great um because uh, again we want to see bitcoin everywhere we want to see crypto everywhere uh, we, we don't discriminate based on countries or geopolitical events this is a worldwide thing um and to see them flip just so quickly is just a testament to how important it is to like what's happening worldwide and how without a doubt like mass adoption we're not we're not even there yet right countries are still trying to decide what do we do with it and so when they decide to throw in and you know russia decides to you know go ahead and legalize it other countries as well like the country i live in america most likely is going to have to say hey well you know our our, com- our competition's doing it we have to do it too and so that's why that goes hand in hand with what we've been reporting on with like states making this legal tender or attempting to make it legal tender right like we're, we're, we're about to see it guys it's coming yeah totally i mean yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I think um, you know I'm going to speak on this from just an American and American perspective. Um, you know, I don't try to be an expert on like global affairs or like other people and where what they are. You know, what's best for their particular country. But I think as a general rule, especially in America, like the answer is not to just like ban crypto participation i don't think america really has any intention of doing that uh because i mean think about this like how much how much gdp 
uh, growth could you potentially lose out on it if you did that? How much tax revenue could you potentially lose out on if you did that, right? I don't think the answer is to uh, regulate. It's or to ban. It's to regulate and tax. You know what I mean? And then stack the incentives to where you can make it, you know, where you can get a huge slice of that pie, um, but your, your citizens can still participate and you you get all the benefits from that. So um, I, I and I think once that happens, like it's it's sort of a game theory scenario. You know, it's like if if that's if that's the best thing to do, and then that helps you become a stronger you know position in in terms of a world economy. Um, you know, it's just like that's kind of what the incentives are for everybody else too, especially major countries. That's just how I see it. We'll, we'll see yeah, what happens. No, you're, you're totally right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it also kind of validates that decentralized payments is definitely like a technology. And it's not just like a fad or anything like that. Like this is right. groundbreaking just for, you know, public good for everybody to utilize. And that's just validation on that regard. Again, because they just flipped so quickly on it. They said, hey, no. Oh, wait, never mind. Yeah, let's do this. Like we have to admit, you know, the reality. Um, we're going to see, I think we're going to see a lot, like, hopefully this will like allow for a bigger movement in America as well. Cause you know, they compete globally and all that other stuff. Right. But like, if they're doing it, then America has to do it in turn. And so we might see faster adoption here in America. And that's what I'm like really, really hyped about. Yeah, totally. So let's see if we get a couple more questions in the chat here. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's just see here. We covered the India story about 30% flat tax earlier this week. Yeah, we can definitely jump in back. There's something one I see that I want to answer here. So I think once NFTs are used for more than just digital art purposes, like memberships and other uh, use case scenarios, especially uh, in the marketing world, it will increase the adoption. Yeah, totally. I think that's going to help with the whole problem we're talking about before, which is like, how do you, you know, worry about people's perception of the space? I think more use cases like that are definitely going to help because I, I think the problem right now is i mean we've been talking about this some I mean, people online outside the crypto space hate nfts i mean a lot of people in the crypto space also hate nfts um but i think part of it is is it, it many of them it, it's sort of like a they get into it and it's sort of like a situation of the emperor has no clothes they're like what's all this about like you all are just like you know this this is all like like crazy stuff, right? Like they don't, they don't get it. And I, I, I totally understand that. I mean, I, I was an early NFT skeptic. I still have some skepticism on some things on NFT. I don't think everything's going to work long term. But I think how you build that leverage, like I was talking about before, is when you start seeing things where it's, it makes way more sense. Like, like uh, you know, and that's what I'm honestly more excited about is like um, intellectual property that can be put on blockchain with NFTs, right? Yeah. Anything that has value that's non-fungible can be represented this way and have incentives and benefits and it makes it better to do it that way where you could transfer that value you know all that type of stuff cut out middlemen um real estate titles um you name it i mean we the thing about the the thing about the u.s real estate market is uh let's look at u.s real estate sales volume 2021 okay so we're just gonna do we're just gonna do an estimate here. Um, so I'm just gonna show you something on screen here. So new real estate, uh, January 26, 2022 for December. Um, basically, I wanted to see the whole sales volume. Um, I'm trying to see the actual amount of money. Okay, I don't I don't see the entire volume here. The whole point I'm trying to make is like you could you could with the current scalability of the Ethereum blockchain, um, with the amount of transactions per day, you could still com you could comfortably facilitate the transfer of every single housing sale that happens in the United States on a daily basis with Ethereum today as it exists now. So um that's not a scaling problem, that's not a technology problem, it's a adoption problem. And what's holding that back? It's um, you know, it's regulation incentives at the local level where these titles are stored um to make that happen um and i do think we can get there um it's just that's the hard problem to crack it's not the technology for that particular use case yeah so it's well said absolutely Let's see we got more questions in here mm-hmm some thoughts on a uh, lens protocol. Some people are asking us to weigh in. And um, so we actually covered lens protocol yesterday on yesterday's show. 
Um, I think it's great. I am excited to utilize it and use it. I think um, it'd be great to start moving away from Web 2 into Web 3 social media. Um, as Gregory kind of pointed out yesterday, the whole idea is you're, you have like a social graph that you're going to be able to bring around. So if, let's say you get a bunch of followers, let's just say here, we could like bring everybody on YouTube over to like the uh, lens protocol. And uh, obviously it's a web two to web three example, but I'm just kind of painting a picture of what the social graph will allow. So that's really cool. Um, it heavily use, utilizes NFT. So that's really cool. We also, um, we want to, we want to, uh, interview Stanny if he's up for it, <laughs> send some yeah. messages this way, cause that'd be great to have you two have like a developer's conversation about this. I really, you know, get into the, into the weeds there. So yeah, I'm, I'm a huge proponent there. Yeah, totally. And yeah, definitely for NFT use cases and web 3.0 use cases. And we got people talking about this, you know, other thing is like skepticism about, you have to understand about the skepticism of NFTs, especially with like online influencers and stuff is the one, one of the strategies for becoming like famous online and generating engagement is basically to be polarizing. You know what I mean? So if you can, if you can sort of be the leader of the tribe that hates NFTs, there's a lot of attention to be had from that. All right. So you have to understand that. Um, and like, um, you know, web 3.0 social media, um, and NFTs are, a way that we can, you know, then stuff like this starts taking off, um, which I think at some point we'll find a crypto social networking protocol uh, use case that actually is sticky. And if this is it, um, then, you know, that's going to be another, another sort of like, we're going to lengthen that lever, <laughs> put it that way. It's definitely got the right team behind it for sure. I don't know about BitCloud or DSO or whatever they call themselves, but I was not yeah. a fan. I wasn't a fan candidly of that um the pricing people and stuff like that is just uh, not not my yeah. cup of tea yeah all right everybody so i'm gonna, i gotta go ahead and sign up for today i got a, a big day ahead of me here um as always if you got anything you want to talk about on the stream definitely fine i am walshy nfg on twitter you can submit uh anything to him that you want to um he's been helping us prepare for these streams add a lot of value uh for sure so um, as always, you know, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to this channel that really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And, you know, if you're as fast with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like gaming courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or, Hey, maybe you'll take a master shortcut entirely. I actually become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.